Thank you everyone for coming back. So we'll start uh, the second segment of today's pre-seminar tra remote training on CCR, um, which is about uh, the which will be about reporting CO2 emissions to ICAO first. And then the second segment, uh, second session will be about uh, the service requests that, um, that Stavis mentioned earlier. So bef before we jump start the second uh, segment, please don't forget to ask any questions you may have um, on about the, the first segment using the chat function. Um, I believe everyone now has access to CCR and you have tested CCR during the break. Um, in case you do not have access to CCR, please inform the secretariat through the chat function again um, so that one of us can help you um, set up the password or um, sort of uh, reactivate the link. Um, in the last segment, you have learned what CCR um, is about and how it looks like. I um, hope you have sort of enjoyed um, the simplicity of it and have you have uh, logged on to the CCR and checked the basic features of the CCR on your own. Now it's the time to do the fun part, which is reporting the CO2 uh, using the CCR and, and also uh, requesting service uh, to ICAO as, of course, a focal point if there is any need. So I'll start with the CO2 emissions, reporting the CO2 emissions to ICAO. Um, as, as you know, and as Jane mentioned earlier, um, for the first time in 2020, airplane operators and verification bodies will uh, both submit verified emissions report to states by the end of this May um, this year. So uh, with the verified emissions report, states will conduct uh, order of magnitude check, including any filling in the data gaps that uh, there may be uh, in case of non-reporting or sort of miss missing some reports. Um, then um, we'll also submit this um, aggregated CO2 emissions information from 2019 to ICAO using CCR, according to the Annex 16, Volume 4. The deadline for states to submit aggregate CO2 emissions by state pair, uh, again, this is aggregate, state pa uh, aggregate emissions by state pair, is uh, the, by the 31st of August 2020. Furthermore, states uh, shall also submit uh, in 2020 the list of airplane operators uh, attribute to the state uh, for 2021 and also the list of verification bodies accredited in the state for 2021. The submission deadline for both uh, airplane operators and verification bodies list is 30th of November 2020. Um, as explained earlier, you will notice that the CO2 emissions reporting um, is regarding the 2019 emission, while the airplane operators and verification bodies information are for 2021. CCR is to facilitate the reporting from states to ICAO on the aggregate CO2 emissions information uh, by state pair, as well as a list of airplane operators and verification bodies, as you've seen in the CCR on the, the, the navigation panel. So let us revisit how such CO2 data can be submitted to ICAO through the CCR data flow process, because it's a very important sort of slide for you to really understand how it works. So, um, so for the specifically for CO2, and it's actually the same for all the reporting areas, um, for 2019 CO2 emissions, for example, if you want to report it um, as, uh, by the end of August this year as, of course, a focal point, the first thing you will have to do is to create the year record, um, the, cre uh, the year record of 2019. Once the year record is created, the, the status of this year record will automatically become as uh, in progress. Then if there is, we are assuming that there is state user here. So if um, when the year record is created and, and the status is in progress, you can add, uh, edit, delete information as needed um, so that you can fill in all these state pair CO2 emissions by state pair in the CCR um, and um, both state user and quarter focal point can, you know, edit, um, edit this information. Once the state user is um, confident that all the information is sort of there and is ready um, for the Corsia focal points review, then the, that the state user changes the status into complete, uh, meaning complete for Corsia focal points review. Then uh, there will be an automated email message that is sent to the Corsia focal point 
for him or her to review this information. The course here focal point will uh, check whether there's any revisions needed in that, uh, you know, while reviewing that, um, that information. And if there is any sort of missing information whatsoever, then we'll change the status back to in progress so that the state user can edit. Again, when the data status is incomplete, the state user cannot edit the information. It's only re read only for the state user. So that, um, that person uh, will have to, um, so state, uh, the data status has to be in progress for the state user to, to edit the information um, and, and, and we'll sort of follow the same path. If there is no revisions needed, then um, this, the course of focal point will sort of uh, report to ICAO the, the CO2 emissions information by changing the status to ready. There will be an automated email message sent to ICAO super user so that ICAO super user can check whether the format is correct or not. So meaning if there's any missing data and whatnot, but not validate the information itself. We are not going to validate the information itself, but just check if the format is correct or not. You know, there's no zero in it, et cetera, et cetera. Whether, um, yeah. And um, if there is any error found, of course, if, um, IKEA super user will change the status back to in progress so that the course of focal point and state user can revisit uh, re 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 the ear record and change the information uh, and you know edit and, and add and whatnot and so that uh, the same flow sort of can can uh, come back by changing the status to complete and, and ready etc if there is no error in the format then um, course of course um, ikeo super user will change the status to locked um, and use that information to calculate uh, the baseline or calculate the um, sector's growth reference, et cetera, et cetera, and then publish whatever information to ICAO Corsia documents that uh, study as mentioned earlier, um, and they use that information there. So this is, again, really important slide for you to understand and, and who, when the status changes, how, you, how and who changes the status and why. Um, and um, so, and, and it's the same for all the reporting areas. So hopefully by now, I, I, you, you're sort of so familiar with this slide and, and understands the, the logic flow. This information um, is, um, was in the central registry um, quick guide series for A. And this, um, the, the slide that you see here with the leaflet D is in addition to that, which was specific to CO2 emissions. So um, as Celius mentioned, the leaflet A was about a uh, more general understanding of a CCR, how it works, and leaflet D is specific to CO2 emissions. So the, the leaflet provides a very concise step-by-step -step guide, as well as the reporting tips on what you should remember and how to report um, the CO2 emissions specifically. And this will be quite handy for you later when you prepare to submit CO2 emissions to, uh, data to ICAO by the end of this uh, August on your own. So um, that's then sort of a basic overview of what, um, what you need to sort of uh, understand for the CO2 emissions reporting. And we'll actually do the live demonstration on CO2 reporting um, using the CCR again, um, uh, using this, uh, going, coming back to this ECR. So I'm gonna log in as test user CCR again, um, like uh, before. So when you sign in, this is again, the same sort of screen that you have seen before. So in the home page, for you to report CO2, you have to go to, in the navigation panel, you have to go to report CO2 emissions. And you will and uh, you will land on this uh, report CO2 emissions list page. Here you can create a year record. The first thing as a course of focal point you for you to do to any reporting is to create a year record. How you do that is by clicking add and click quick add. 
then you will have add reports here to missions page. Your state is Sao Tome and Principe, as, uh, Principe, as, um, as said before, and then you will choose a reporting year. A year. So for, for this time, let's choose 2019 because this is the year that you have to report um, this year, and you will create. You will notice that there are two buttons, one create and create and continue. Create and continue is uh, valid for when you want to create a multiple year records. This time you only want to report uh, for the you know, 2019, so let's just create 2019 year record only. Um, then as you see here by default, the data status is in progress. The, um, uh, the, for the new year record, data status is again uh, by default is in progress and you see the reporting year 2019 and the ICAO state that you are reporting. Um, you can access this further information by clicking uh, or uh, the pencil sign which reads as edit. Uh, when it's read only, I, if you remember from previous uh, Stelios presentation it was just I icon which was read only. Uh, for edit you have a pencil icon. You click that and then you will access the the year record, which is for now empty. So you see um, in the details tab, you have again the reporting year information, so the ICAO state and the reporting year 2019, and then total CO2 emissions uh, in tons. So because for 2019 emissions, there's no offsetting requirements and whatnot, um, all those, the first two rows, total subject to offsetting requirement and total exempt from offsetting requirement are set as not applicable because they're not app applicable for 2019. Um, then we'll have a total CO2 emissions. Again, because it's an empty year record, there is zero, but it will be automatically changed and, and reflected here when there is uh, a new entry of CO2 emissions by state pair. And you see the data status again is in progress because the default setting for a new year record is in progress. You see that the timestamp, the, the date and timestamp and who create that year record is also um, recorded in the CCR. So let's go to the second tab, um, um, which is CO2 emissions by state pair. So this is the, the main sort of area for you to, uh, to think about. This is where you report by state pair the CO2 emissions. Um, and uh, I'll get back to it after sort of going through different tabs because this is where you know, you're gonna do, we're gonna do the majority of the functions. Um, CO2 emissions by airplane operator, this is only for 2021 and onwards. So you don't have to worry about this anymore uh, for now. Um, you, there is no action you can do. As you can see, there is no sort of add function. There's nothing, there's no record whatsoever here. So this is sort of inactive for 2019. Um, this will be active and, and you are expected to fill in this um, you know, tab when uh, 2020, uh, you know, from 2021 and onwards. But uh, for 2019, again, this is inactive. So you don't have to worry about this tab. The fourth tab is just like what Silly has shown you before. Um, it's a CO2 emissions data journal that uh, records every action whatsoever that has done in uh, for this year record. So you see that a new year record was created by test user CCR, me, um, who was a course at focal point, and et cetera, et cetera. So you see the timestamps and et cetera. And then even the view, uh, viewing option um, action is recorded here. So if you sort of uh, add new records, etc., this will be captured in the journal as well. So let's go back to the CO2 emissions by state pair uh, tab. As mentioned, this is where all the action, the important action happens and, and, and where you have to sort of uh, input all the state pair C by state CO2 emissions um, information here. So let's uh, create one manually. Um, you click add and full add here. And then, you know, your record is automatically, um, yeah. Um, then you put um, from which state and to which state uh, and how, how much CO2, uh, CO2 was emitted and whether that information is confidential or not. That's all the information that you need to put in. So since um, 
our state is Automa uh, and Principe. Let's choose that by searching for, yeah. So, uh, and again, it's a an one way information, not a sort of, so from Sao Tome uh, and Principe to some uh, state. And if it's a return flight, you know, say, then you have to put that information in a separate uh, entry. So let's uh, assume that there is a state pair of two from uh, Sao Tome Principe to Afghanistan. And um, for a CO2 mission of um, 1,234.56 uh, uh, tons of CO2. Um, and, you know, say that this data, uh, this information is not confidential, then you don't click confidential data and create. The difference between create, create and continue and create and add another is create is create and you return to the, to the, the list page. If you click create and continue, then you, you create this year record, uh, create this uh, entry and then just stay here, you know, create and continue. Uh, another, the create and add another is create this um, entry and then you create another entry. So it's pretty much sort of straightforward um, depending on what option you want to see. Since I want to go back to the list, let's just click create. Then you uh, then you return to the list um, of uh, of that year record. So you see from South Tome and Principe to Afghanistan with the CO2 emissions. And um, again, because for 2019 there's no offsetting requirement whatsoever, so it's automatically set as not approvable and um, confidential data because I didn't click, I didn't check the box. It's false you can add the return um, sort of uh, state pair as well by clicking another full ad and, um, and do the same basically. So from Afghanistan to back to Sao Tome and Principe, um, say this time a, a bit slightly different CO2 emission and let's check confidential data and see what happens. So again, create. Now you see that there are two entries here, um, one from Sao Tome, to Prince, uh, Sao Tome and Principe to Afghanistan, the other from Afghanistan back to Sao Tome and Principe. You see, um, for this, the second entry, you have a confidential data because you have checked the confidential data status back there. If you return to the details tab, you'll see the total CO2 emissions of, from the two, sec, uh, two entries uh, automatically calculated for you, so you don't have to worry about this. The, so you see the total CO2 emissions and, and automatically um, sort of uh, reflecting the, the new entries as, as needed. Let's go back uh, to the tab and so again back to the list of CO2 emissions by state pair. Um, you can, you know, you can add manually like this what I've done uh, for all the state pairs um, that was uh, operated by an airplane operators in your uh, attribute to your state, but that will take a lot of time. So uh, another cool feature of um, the CTR that you can do is to import um, a file. Uh, a comma separate value file that Stelius mentioned in the first segment. So you can um, not just manually input something, but import a file that that has all the information. At the moment, um, and, and IKEA will provide a template for that file. At the moment, there's no file sort of available in this uh, in this list, but you'll you'll have that uh, template later. So let's um, see what uh, how that template looks like. So here, um, as as you see, although it has been opened by an Excel file, you see the file um, name is CSV, comma separate value file. 
this is the template, which is very uh, simple. So from to CO2 emissions, tons of CO2, and then confidential data. That's all you need, um, just like manual entry. And then you you input the the state state names from from and to, and then again the value for CO2 emissions and whether it's confidential by uh, data by false or true. So you see that there are you know there are some capital letters, um, small letters mixed here. It doesn't matter. Um, um, CCR doesn't uh, separate between uh, capital letters and, and small letters. And uh, obviously the CO2 emissions here has to be a, a numerical value and confidential data, again, as mentioned, it's either true or false and see how uh, CCR sort of imports this template. So you import, uh, you can import something by, um, by sort of clicking tools and import CSV. Um, I see a question from Franz that uh, whether the state name has to be standardized. That's a that's a great question. I will actually I will actually um, have a a specific sort of file uh, importing a file with the wrong uh, state name um, for for your so so uh, you know uh, thanks for the question. We will address that later. Um, uh, there was. Another question about confidential data, uh, which one is confidential and not, I'm, I'm gonna address it later. Um, so, so this is the file that I shown you before and let's uh, try importing it and see how CCRs or reads that data. So um, you see that this is, so before CCR to actually import it, it reads that data and sort of shows you the data preview um, side. And um, it reads, you know, we have received six new pairs in the file. Um, I know that it says Excel file, but uh, it's, an, it's an error in the system. We have um, asked our developer to change it to CSV file. So um, to, to make sure that this, you have to import CSV file, not an Excel file. Um, and uh, yeah. So it will be corrected later, um, but uh, so so you have to review this file whether this is what you wanted to import. Um, you will notice that on the left hand side in the record, you will see that the name of the state here and then the data state is automatically imported here. You don't have to worry about this in the template. You just need to provide these four um, columns um, <clears throat> and not worry about the first sort of column that is automatically generated by the CCR. You see that um, you the the list of um, entries that you wanted to include. You click confirm and continue import by clicking the button. <coughs> Excuse me. So when the data import is uh, done successfully, you will have a um, message that says data imported successfully and you can return to the list by clicking the button and see what uh, and how the, uh, the information has been imported. <coughs> As mentioned, uh, you see that a six new entries are imported. Now you have eight total um, sort of entries here in the CCR. And you notice that there is no sort of the, the, the small letters and capitals and whatnot is automatically corrected in the CCR, as you can see here. So what you have put in as confidential and, uh, and not is included on here. And you click confidential when, um, when, airplane, when um, airplane operators has specifically asked for a state pair uh, to be considered as confidential. Uh, you'll remember in the Annex 16 Volume 4, um, this was sort of um, implemented because for certain routes, there may be one or two airplane operators that are uh, operating that route. And by having this information here, you know, and, and not treated as a confidential data, um, that information uh, may be commercially sensitive for certain airplane operators. So, um, so there is an option to sort of treat it as confidentially and uh, airplane operators will, you know, uh, flag those pairs in their emissions report as well to the state. And, and for state as well, you know, um, depending on how that route is uh, operated, etc., uh, state will inform ICAO by clicking it as confidential and or not. 
uh, depending on you know that that information. I hope I addressed the question. Um, so, so that's it. Um, that's how it works. And let's see, um, as uh, as a question came from France, you know, let's see what kind of sort of errors there could be uh, in the system. Um, I know that you know it's it's sometimes it's not easy to so say know the uh, know the exact standardized like state names, um, you know, etc. And you may uh, as human you know you may make mistake um, by clicking uh, including a domestic pairs for example, or uh, include some errors in the CO2 emissions information etc. So we'll sort of go over different errors that you can make here and and in, in CCR as specifically for CO2 emissions. But let's do that first for the manual entry, what kind of errors you or mistakes you may make and how CCR sort of detects automatically by having certain business rules that preempts that kind of, you know, error entry or mistake uh, entries by mistake. So say for, for a state pair between Albania and Algeria and you put a minus 400 and see, you know, it had, you know, what what you intended, for example, was 400 tons of CO2. But for example, as a mistake, you you put minus uh, in front of it, and try to create that. Then um, then CCR automatically detects that there's an error, and and the field um, has to be between these numbers. So you cannot put in a minus uh, or negative value in the CO2 tons. Another thing that you can do, for example, is say zero to zero CO2 emissions. You, for example, forgot to include uh, the CO2 emissions, um, the amount of CO2, a proper amount uh, here. Then, and when you try to create the, the record again, because you, it has to be between 0.01 uh, or bigger than 0.01, the C, uh, CCR will automatically detect that there is an error and uh, won't let you to in, uh, import that uh, or input that entry. Another mistake you can make is say I, I mean if you have done any programming you know it's quite uh, confusing sometimes when you mix between O and zero um, and it's really difficult to detect that mistake for example. So when you when you sort of make similar um, mistake here in the CCR then it will automatically um, sort of takes it that it has to be a numerical value not uh, not a character. So it will know that you know you cannot make that kind of mistake. So in when you try to sort of manually import uh, and enter something, you will sort of you know uh, CCR has pre uh, has preempted you from making that kind of mistakes. Uh, another thing is that for a state pair, because it's a drop down menu, you cannot sort of you know create a state name. You cannot um, you know uh, put a a spelling mistake or anything like that when you manually enter um, a state state pair. Let's uh, cancel and go back to the list and uh, make sort of mistakes with more sort of different types of mistakes. So um, let's first uh, do a error in uh, of a domestic pair. Uh, I have a question from uh, Michael that actually sort of addresses what I'm doing right now as well. So I I'll sort of um, I'll sort of answer a portions of his uh, question now, and then uh, address uh, another portion of his uh, ans uh, question in in the uh, later. So this this is the file that uh, we're going to use to import with a a domestic pair here. So you see the third row here is from Canada to Canada, um, a domestic pair. You may sort of, you know, um, have a mistake by you intended, for example, a Canada Cambodia route or was uh, whatnot, but uh, by mistake you created Canada Canada route. Um, and uh, say, you know, when you try to import this, what happens in the CCR? So, so this is a file that you wanted to import, and uh, let's see, try importing that file. So with a domestic error uh, file, when you try to import uh, uploaded, 
again, CCR will read the data because there's no error in the template itself or there's no error in, in the file itself. Um, CCR will read the data and, and try to import it as, as such. When you um, click confirm and continue, in the training version, it says data imported successfully, which is sort of partially true because it imports uh, the, the data that uh, the other two rows were correct um, correct data, for example. Um, but and and it uh, it had a CCR had a business rule to remove anything domestic automatically and not inform the the user. Uh, when we realized this sort of uh, mistake, uh, we informed the developers. So in the actual CCR that you, that will be officially launched, um, there will be an error message message that says, um, you know, the you know um, row three, for example, has domestic pair, or you know, to and from is the same for row three, or something like that. So it triggers an error message for the user to know that there is something wrong uh, with a state pair. But for now, because um, in the training version, it sort of automatically removed that pair, uh, it doesn't appear here. So you see um, the last uh, last pair was Canada to Canada. Now it's, it's not in the system. But again, this is only for the training version. In the actual CCR that you will see, um, the, it will trigger a narrow message that says, you know, from and to and uh, information is the same or something like that. So thank you for that question. Um, and uh, say the second portion of Michael's uh, question was when you try to import, a, you know, a duplicate state pair, um, can you can you do that, for example? So let's try um, the, the, the file that we used before this file to see if that actually happened, if you can import the same state pair, duplicate state pair. So again, because the, the the you know CCR reads the file correctly and try to import it. Then you see that for row number one to six, all the rows, the state pair combination already already exists in the in for the reporting period. So reporting period of 2019, it already exists. So you cannot do anything. What you can do instead uh, is you can download the error sheet, which will say you know uh, for by by different rows whether it was successfully imported or not. Let's uh, actually try that, downloading the error sheet. Um, there's something wrong with my computer, so it's some, sometimes it takes um, really long for me to download any file. So uh, I think it ha it's happening at the same time. Um, so I cannot show you the error sheet, but if you try it on your own, you will see that error sheet that says successful for certain rows, uh, failed for certain rows because, you know, because the combination uh, already existed or because it's domestic pair, et cetera, et cetera. So let's return to uh, report CO2 emissions and see a different type of error now, uh, which is the state name. So as mentioned, for a um, for uh, for manual entry, you can only check. You can only um, you can only choose a state name from the drop down menu. So it's um, it's sort of automatically uh, you don't have to worry about that error. But in this case, oh, so um, so the intent is that. Um, there, I'm from Korea. There are two Koreas in the world. Um, one is Republic of Korea. The other is Democratic, Public, uh, Democratic People's Republic of Korea, uh, which is North Korea. So um, say you didn't know about that. You had a state pair that is named um, from Comoros to Korea and sort of wanted to import this file. The, and, and let's see how CCR sort of detects when there is an error in the state name or you know it's not an official state name how it sort of goes about it so let's try to import this file oh in the meantime there was a question from zia um whether when there is error in the file whether uh, we'll sort of upload the correct data or you have to reload it um you you can actually see it from here uh, how it happens but uh, the short answer is that 
it will import all the correct uh, roles. So, you know, as I said before, the the file will the if you download the error file, it will say successful and failed because for the right pairs, it will import uh, nonetheless. So for successful, meaning, you know, the the, the rows that are correct will be imported um, automatically. This, um, however, may, may not be the case when it cannot even read the file itself. So you see from here in the state pairs, you see that um, the this new two, what, there was a new two in the Excel file. So it, the CCR cannot even sort of read this file, so it can't import even the successful ones because you cannot sort of click and, and import it. You cannot force CCR to import it because there's a you know error that you know CCR cannot even sort of read it. So with Korea being just Korea here, it cannot uh, do anything. I know that there are sort of uh, error messages that's a bit confusing here. So new uh, to record um, found import these. Um, this error message will be sort of um, corrected in the actual official version. It's it's because it's a training version. We had this and, and we have asked developers to change the the wording here so that it's more straightforward for the state um, that, you know, there is an error in the state name, you know, uh, please check or something like that. So you cannot even sort of try importing the file when there is something, uh, you know, perceived as uh, as something that is not readable for CCR. So you see that the entry, the name, uh, the number of entries stays the same as in 10. And uh, let's sort of change the, the name back to Republic of Korea and see whether it can now be uh, imported. So now it reads uh, correctly, and that's why you have confirm and continue option to, to, you know, to click. And let's see what happens. So since there's no sort of error in the CSV file, you'll have, you know, data imported successfully, and you can return and see that there are 13 different uh, entries now, because, you know, the, 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 all the three entries has been imported. Um, you can see 10 here because the, the page size is 10. You can go to the second page if you'd like, but another option is to change the page size. So say change the page size to 50 because there will be a lot of different state pairs um, for CO2 emissions especially. So that's another option that you can do. Uh, I have another question from Nicoletta saying, um, if we have two different aircraft operators uh, reporting the same flight route with different emissions, will both routes be recorded or maybe um, may there be errors? So as I mentioned earlier, um, states has to aggregate by state pair um, and report to CCR. So it, you may have two or three or even like 10 airplane operators that are just operating the same route, then it's state's responsibility to aggregate by state pair and, uh, and, and put it here. And that's why it's uh, by state pair CO2 emissions, not uh, for by uh, airplane operator. Um, again, um, I, I believe that sort of addresses your question. So um, it's not, uh, you're not supposed to sort of, you know, check uh, airlines emissions report and then put it here um, by airline, but uh, put aggregate for the same route and then put it here as an aggregated, um, aggregate uh, value. So another sort of error, um, let me show you the other type. Yeah, per state, yes. Um, you have to aggregate uh, emissions per state, yes. It's not per uh, for each airline, er, for each airplane operator, but uh, aggregate per state. 
So another error you can have is the same for manual entry. You may have zero value here. Say you, you the intent was not zero. Um, you wanted to, for example, put like a hundred or something, but because you know there's different rows, so many different state pairs that you may have in your in your CSV file, you may have that type of error. Um, what CCR do, and it's it's again considered as a numerical value. So it, uh, let's see what happens if you try to import this type of C, um, CSV file. So again, because it's a numerical value, um, CCR will read that um, file without any issues. But when you try to import it, that's when you will see an error message. An error message that says row number five value is blank, you know, zero, or duplicate, or validation failed. So um, this type of error will sort of, um, again, as mentioned, all the other rows from number one to four will be imported without an issue. And you will see that in if you download the error sheet. Again, I cannot show you because somehow my download phone function is not working, but uh, but uh, you, you won't have any issues uh, from your computer. It's just my computer um, having the issue. But uh, you can check that uh, the four other rows has been successfully imported by, again, checking the number of entries, which is 17 right now. Before, it used to be 13 only. Now, the other four has been uploaded without an issue. So from Canada, Brazil, Brazil, Nigeria, Nigeria, Republic of Korea, and Kenya, J Japan has been imported without an issue. But uh, the, the, the entry with uh, zero emission is not, uh, is not uh, imported here. So, meaning CCR has sort of some business rules implemented here so, so that um, human error can be minimized as much as possible. Um, yeah. Uh, so, um, I have another question from Zia. Um, uh, that whether you have to report all international state pairs at this point or upload only the information for the operators that exceeds uh, 10,000 uh, CO2, tons of CO2. So um, the airplane operators that, that do not operate, uh, that operate less than 10,000 um, CO2, emission, uh, CO2 emissions, um, they are not going to report to you to begin with. They won't. Um, they won't do. You know. Uh, they won't have an emissions report because they don't have any obligations under Corsia. They won't have the emissions report. They won't have verified emissions report for sure. Um, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, um, there was another question about uh, humanitarian or commercial flight. So during Corona uh, virus era, does the flight regarded uh, regarded as commercial or humanitarian? How we can differentiate and exclude them. Um, so it should be the airplane operator who, when they submit to you, they they shouldn't include humanitarian flights. So it's not for the state to you know check the different state pairs and then see whether this is humanitarian or not. Um, airplane operators, when they when they have the emissions uh, report and uh, when verifiers or verify that information, they are the ones who will have to check whether uh, a certain route is uh, was indeed commercial or you know it used to be a commercial flight, but uh, for this specific period or for day or whatnot was humanitarian and was excluded. So that's the verifiers when they they have to very check that information and uh, properly report to state. So and and states only use that information and and you know for the ones that are um, subject to Corsia requirements uh, to to ad aggregate and and then report to ICAO. So um, that was that. Um, so I think I have covered the importing functions. Now let's sort of see other uh, here others information here other different buttons here. So what uh, you see is a filter because there will be a different sort of, you know, a, a number of state pairs. What you can do is sort of check um, what, you know, state pairs uh, departed from or from is from Afghanistan, for example, and, and search. Then you will see, you know, you can do that filter uh, here or you can click by, uh, okay. And you can go back by 
clicking clear and then uh, do the filter by clicking the, the name of the rows or columns, uh, sorry. Um, so say you can sort of, you know, um, what's the word? Sort, sort it uh, by clicking the, uh, the you know, different columns as you'd like to for, for you to sort of filter through and, and understand more. The other sort of cool feature that you have um, is say for confidential data, um, you know, you realize that certain state pairs were indeed confidential, um, but you didn't sort of realize that when you report it. What you can do is sort of do use a bulk function here to say for the first two state pairs here, you want it to uh, change it to a confidential data. Then what you can do is update it, bulk update it by um, clicking, yes, I want to update it and I want to set the value as, you know, set the value as in true, you know, that it's confidential data and you can click update. Then the first two uh, entries will be um, put as true for confidential. Um, just take some time from my computer. So yes, uh, huh? I think, I think, um, oh, okay. So because I, I used the sorting function, I think uh, it showed, yeah, because I used the sorting function, uh, sort of the, the two rows that I use are, I think were indeed, uh, uh, okay, let me, let me retry it. So, um, yeah, because I use sort function, I, I think sort of, you know, the, the, the two pairs that I um, put as in, which used to be false are now um, now true, but it's, it's not easily sort of uh, visible here. But anyway, um, so you can use a bulk function to do that. Uh, the other option is bulk delete, but I believe this is only available for the training version. And in the actual CCR, you won't have a delete function and uh, you have to manually delete uh, lines because we don't want to, we don't want you to have sort of like make too many mistakes in by accidentally clicking and, and deleting all different rows. So there may be some changes in the bulk function because we want to sort of avoid uh, any mistakes as, or avoid a situation that uh, that may trigger some mistakes from, from the users. But um, the currently uh, it, what is available is that you can do a bulk update, you can do a bulk uh, delete as well. And it's available here. Um, but you don't have to do the bulk up, uh, delete, for example, if you want to delete a different specific row, you can do by just clicking the, the arrow down, downward arrow button there and then click delete. And you will have, you know, are you sure you want to delete this and et cetera, et cetera. And then you can just click delete to delete the entry. You can obviously edit the entry as well after you have uploaded, um, you know, different files or different CSV files or, or manual entry by again uh, clicking the pencil icon and manually change whether the, the either the CO2 emissions uh, amount or the uh, confidential data, whether it's confidential data or not. Um, subject to offsetting requirement, even when it's it's again it's automatically not applicable here. But even when um, when 2021 and onwards, it will be automatically sort of set by CCR. You don't have to worry about this. Uh, it will be automatically through CCR. Will know which state pair is indeed uh, subject to offsetting requirement and which is not. And and you see here um, for even for a you know individual records, you will see who created that state pair at what time. And if you edit something, say for uh, say to a different number, then you that uh, this row will be changed. You know, last updated by who. So if there are multiple users, for example, state users and of course a focal point, then you will know who edited what at what time. So you can edit the you know these the amount here and we'll see that a new sort of a revised uh, co2 emission has been updated so again 450. so i think let me just check if there's anything else i wanted to cover um 
Oh yeah, so um, that's for 2019. For 2019, I think it's uh, pretty obvious. You just uh, just need to include everything as as, as I said. So either manually entry uh, enter information or sort of import uh, in bulk. Uh, you know, f using a CSV file. Um, that's what you can do. But say for 2020, when you want to sort of uh, create a 2020 year record. What you can do, uh, and and there's no say additional state pair that uh, that's been operated by your uh, by your airplane operator. What you can do is, uh, you can create a manual sort of you know new uh, year record that is completely empty, or you can copy from 2019 um, and just use that information. So you want to copy from, for example, 2019 and create a 2020 year record with the state pair uh, the same as in 2019. So when you do that, you will see that uh, um, it's taking some time. Yeah, I shouldn't take this long, but it's, um, I think because of the coronavirus, uh, you know, everyone is working from home, so the internet is exceptionally uh, slow nowadays, but it shouldn't take this long. Uh, you, you'll have, um, you know, a copied ear record sort of, um, you know, very quick, so you can just access it and, and edit it. So voila, now we have the new 2020 ear record that is copied from 2019. What you will notice is that the total CO2 emissions is still zero. There is no, um, you know, when you copy from a different year record, it only copies a state pair information, but the CO2 emissions amount, because that will vary by different years, it's set as in, you know, nothing. You you have to, as a course focal point, you have to edit that information and, and include the CO2 emissions amount for that specific year. Uh, you'll notice that it's set as no um, subject to offsetting requirement. This, ha uh, this is another error that we spotted, so it's uh, going to be corrected in the actual uh, CCR and, and it will be set as in not applicable like, like before. And again, for the confidential data, whether it's confidential or not, you have to be, uh, you have to sort of use that, um, uh, you have to sort of check whether it's confidential or not uh, by editing the each, uh, different rows. Oh, so yeah, um, we, uh, and that's sort of a creating a new year record. So let's go back to 2019. So now you are quite confident that, you know, uh, your 2019 year record information, this is all the state pairs you have, say, and you don't, uh, there's no additional information whatsoever. Um, then what you now is a time for for say to review that information and and sum it to a kale. So what you can uh, how you do it is go back to the detail tab and check again the total CO2 emissions information, which is automatically updated by the information that you have already entered. And then from there, you change the data status from in progress to complete or to ready. So right now, um, I have this ready option because I'm a Corsia focal point and you can sort of eat, quickly check that because I have the access to service request as well. If you're a state user, we, you will only have in progress and complete only. Right now, because I'm a Corsia focal point again, I have the option to report to ICAO. Um, so let's sort of first change it to complete because um, you know, you you are uh, you want to change the status and and review that information. Uh, for a course of focal point, there isn't much difference between complete and in progress because you still have the option to to edit the information. However, if you are a state user, um, if the course of focal point or state user has changed the data status to complete, which you can see from here, data status. You want, this icon will be I icon only for a state user because they don't have the right to edit the information. However, as a course of focal point, I can still edit the information, but uh, now I'm I'm satisfied with the you know the um, the information there, so I want to change the this information to ready. So this is the act of uh, submitting to ICAO. 
Um, what you have to remember is that you have to save it when you change the status and, and you just clicking ready doesn't change anything. ICAO won't know, it's still pending uh, for us. Only when you click ready and then save, that's when you know you'll get a notification saying, you know, are you sure you want to do this? Because that will make this ear record as read only for you, and it will be submitted to ICAO, but and, and a message will be sent to ICAO super user to review for format uh, whether the format is correct or not. Let's do that. Um, so you are basically submitting this information to ICAO. So now it's uh, re ready uh, data status, and you'll see that the action you cannot you cannot edit it. It's just read only. You have an eye icon there. So this is so, sort of like what you need to do for the CO2 uh, emissions reporting. It's all that you need to do for the CO2 emissions reporting. Either manually import uh, manually sort of in, uh, input the year, uh, the state pair information and the CO2 emissions amount and whether it's confidential data or uh, using an import function, uh, import CSV file, and then uh, put uh, the state pairs as needed. Um, something that I haven't sort of like uh, you uh, shown you before was to export it as well to a different um, file types. Oh, so when you sort of, you know, um, also click this read only uh, ear record you only see it's read only so then there's no uh, changes made and whatnot so for you to uh, edit this information when you realize that there's a uh, mistake that's uh, what uh, service request is about you have to contact ICAO through service request to change any information um, so before I do that, let me just quickly show you the exporting function. I'm not really sure how often you would use it, but uh, rather than, you know, compared to importing, exporting is the same concept. So, but the, the only difference is that you can export to uh, either, you know, CSV file or Excel file. So importing was only done for the CSV file before uh, data sort of protections um, and, and whatnot. Whereas exporting, you can do for both Excel file format or CSV file format. That's about it. So I think reporting CO2 emissions is sort of um, done from my side. If there is any other question, I think I have addressed all the questions that was uh, um, asked while I was doing the presentation. But if there is additional question, please feel free to, to you know, use the chat function and, and drop me a message so that I can address it um, you know, during the presentation. Uh, there was one question from Ustani about um, what happens with reporting on other areas other than the CO2 emissions. Oh, um, so, okay, thank you. Thank you, for, uh, thank you, Stavius. So other reporting areas, you can do pretty much the same, um, um, but we won't, uh, for the interest of time, be, uh, we're not planning to address it uh, in this uh, webinar. Uh, this uh, pre-seminar, um, but you can sort of, it's pre pretty much straightforward. You can go to say, report the airplane operators and do the same sort of, you know, create a year record and then either, you know, import, uh, either uh, do a manual in entry or import the CSV file. The same goes for verification bodies, eligible fuels, course eligible fuels and canceled emissions units. You don't have to worry, I guess, mostly for canceled emissions units. For course eligible fuels, it's an optional um, sort of feature, so you can do it or not, but it's not mandatory. For airplane operators and verification bodies, which you have to um, report by the end of November, you can, you can, you know, as mentioned, it's, you can follow the same logic and you can refer to the leaflet B and C that was sent out to you uh, earlier. Um, so, um, um, that was sent out to you earlier uh, last week, uh, I believe, um, along with the invitation to this pre-seminar. There's another question from Nisar saying, can you please spell out the CO2 emissions AO tap three? I'm not, uh, sh oh, um, okay, right. So, um, so say for a, a, a CO2 ear record, I believe what you mean here, is that is that true? So the CO2 emissions for airplane operators here, um, this is again, something that you don't have to worry about for 2019 and 2020. 
because um, this is inactive for now. It will be active in 2021, and I believe we'll have another chance to sort of, you know, let you uh, or uh, walk you through this feature later, you know, either uh, for different regional seminars and whatnot uh, for, you know, in, in the future. So for, uh, yeah, there was another question about the 2019 and 20 um, report for verification uh, bodies and airplane operators. So I believe that you have already done this with, uh, with the online spreadsheet that was active before. So the, the information that you have provided for the airplane bodies, uh, airplane operators and verification bodies in the online spreadsheet will be automatically imported to the CCR. So you don't have to worry about it. What uh, you need to report by November is the for 2021, and and yes, you have to do it for uh, with the CCR because the online spreadsheet will be inactive once this official uh, CCR is launched. <sighs> finally, um, so finally, it's the the last presentation for today, which is the again about submitting a service request in CCR to ICAO Secretariat. Um, so you'll see, you know, as you've seen in the CCR webpage, at the bottom of the navigation panel is, or navigation menu is uh, the service request. Uh, this is only visible to you when you are a Corsia focal point. If you're a state user, you won't even have an option, so you don't need to worry about, you know, submitting a service request. It, it has to come from the Corsia focal point only because we don't want to have a kind of like a you know, communication mistakes or mix of communication or confusion. So it's only sort of visible and uh, active for the Corsia focal point. So what is a service request? It's a, a set of sort of predefined requests for assistance by a KO related to the CCR. So when you encounter issues regarding CCR, you may be sort of, you know, if it's just like help uh, kind of thing, you may be able to find relevant answers or information from the help section, you know, the question mark that you've seen at the top. Um, but service request is not about it. It's it's rather when you need to resolve something with CCR. For example, when you have um, sort of by mistake changed the ear record status into ready, although you didn't intend to do so, um, or you realized error after you submitted the um, ear record. At, you know, after you submitted the ear record, you realize that there was an error, um, and you want uh, want to sort of fix that error. Then you can use a service request. Uh, to submit, uh, you know, a request to ICAO for assistance. So, because, you know, the situation may vary by situation, um, you have to provide further information to ICAO, so give it more details into what um, what needs to be fixed, and, you know, what, what was the situation, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and an ICAO super user will address that issue uh, with you. So as, as I mentioned uh, in the previous slide, only uh, Corsia Focal Point can create a service request because state user doesn't even have an option to, you know, have uh, access to that site, uh, that, that page. So creating a service request is not very different from creating other ear records. So just like CO2 emissions, you click add and full add or click add, um, and then sort of in the, there will be a drop down message that you have, drop down uh, menu that you have to choose a different types of service requests you may have. As mentioned, it's a predefined list, so you have to choose the, the, the right type of, um, type of uh, request that you're asking. Um, and, and then in addition, you know, not like other areas, you have a description bar at the top, at the, at the bottom, um, that, uh, that where you can provide a background information to ICAO to properly guide you and support you. Um, for other reporting areas, it's straightforward, you know, it's CO2 emissions, it's airplane operators and verification bodies and whatnot. So you don't have to provide a description for that, you know, what airplane operator is. But uh, but for service requests, because ICAO cannot really know the situation that you're in, you, you need to provide a further detail um, in the description um, box. So as I mentioned, um, the different types of service requests that can happen is um, the, the options. There are six different options available or six different types of service requests in the current CCR design. Um, 
So the first one is data upload request. So, um, you know, suppose there is an error in the CCR, uh, CCR, you know, technical system, and uh, you are, of course, a focal point, focal point, but cannot seem to create a year record. You know, you you try to sort of add a a add full ed or kick ed and and create a year record, but it seems it's not working. Um, you already compiled information in the CSV format, so you just need to import it, say, for the CO2 emissions um, year record, um, but you just cannot create a, a year record, so you cannot obviously import the CSV file. So in such a case, what you can do is to, uh, to you know, uh, use a service request to ask ICAO to upload this data um, at the CCR when, uh, when, because you cannot do it. So this is only to sort of to uh, address the situation when there is a technical difficulty from the Corsia focal point that you cannot create the ear record. Um, what you will see is something like this. So you um, have to sort of submit the, the data itself because, you know, it's not just the ear record itself, but you, you want to, you know, want um, Corsia uh, ICAO super user to, you know, import the data for you. So you, you need to, you have the option to upload the data or attach the file um, that you want to import. Um, again, this service request is only to accommodate a possible sort of error, technical glitch in the system that the Corsia focal point cannot upload your record. Um, if there is no error in the system, Corsia focal point should be the one who creates and uploads the ear record on its own and not expect ICAO to do it for them because, um, you know, this is only to address the technical glitch. Um, obviously, even when, uh, you know, you know, there, there was an issue with the technical uh, side from CCR, so ICAO created the year record for you. It's the state's responsibility to check the information and, you know, uh, change the data status accordingly, including reporting to ICAO by changing the data st status to ready. So ICAO, uh, ICAO super user will assist you to create the year record, but won't, um, you know, it's still under the responsibility of the state or of course a focal point to report it back to ICAO, you know, when the, the information is ready for ICAO's review to, for format correctness again. Um, the second option is release data with status ready. Um, as mentioned in the previous slide, let's suppose that a Corsia focal point finds error in the data right after the data has been submitted to ICAO. So in this case, service request can be used uh, to submit to uh, to release that data. So the this data has been you know uh, reported to ICAO by by because the status has been changed to ready, but you want to change it back to in progress so that you can you know uh, manipulate the data uh, more as needed. Um, another option is after that um, more time has passed. Say for example, so ICAO has already checked the format and, you know, thought it was, uh, saw that it was okay, so has, cha has changed the status to lock, so um, the, the information locked, uh, the, the data has been already sort of locked for ICAO to calculate or publish or whatever. Um, State can still sort of rectify that information by asking for, uh, to unlock that submitted data. Um, however, it, if if the locked data has already been used for calculations such as total sectors, uh, sectoral CO2 emissions or the sector's growth factor, the calculation itself won't be adjusted um, uh, for, to, to correct that error. Uh, you know, um, it's, it's as uh, written in the Annex 16 Volume 4, you know, when, when the calculation is already conducted, even though the, the data itself may be unlocked, um, you know, we cannot uh, accommodate that the change in, in the calculation, but uh, you know again this and uh, uh, the the newly updated the the previous information that it was locked will be archived in the ICAO system, and the newly updated data will be in the CCR for for information, um, but uh, it won't be used for again a new calculation. The last two is to inform um, ICAO of possible changes in the in the Corsia focal point status or the participation status. So first, um, when you want to inform ICAO that you know the Corsia focal point of a state will be changed, 
Um, you can do so by using the service request, but as there is a right sort of uh, there is a red star. Um, this is only for information purposes, and I kill will not take any action on the basis of this request. Um, official state letter um, nominating a person as a Corsier focal point, a new person as a Corsier focal point, should should be uh, is the official uh, communication. So without that, I can't will you know thank you for sharing that information in advance but we cannot take any action we cannot consider that person as a new course focal point unless there is a state letter that's sent to us uh, just like that the change in voluntary participation status um you know i the state can uh, we would appreciate if the course focal point shares that information with us in uh, you know put uh, in advance but again, we won't take any action. We won't consider that that status has joined the Corsia uh, voluntarily. Um, we would still need that official state letter uh, informing ICAO that that uh, that state A wants to volunteer to participate in the Corsia. So the last two, the change in Corsia focal point or change in participation status, both is only for the information purposes only and uh, won't trigger any action from ICAO on the basis of that information. And um, the, the final one is quite pre, uh, pretty much obvious. It's other, you know, when um, we have tried to cover uh, different scenarios where, you know, service requests may be needed. Um, other is, you know, when, that uh, when when the, for the situations that is not covered for that uh, so for the other five um, you you choose those options if not uh, then you can use the other function to to let us know so in the um, as mentioned earlier when you create a, a service request you have to put additional information additional comments to provide us a you know a relevant information more background information if it's not done um you know the the data state is uh, I'll, I'll, in case there's more information needed I'll, i will cover in this slide um, um i saw another question from michael saying can there be uh can there only be one course of focal point user in the system yes uh for uh, for one state account there is only one course of focal point the rest can be state user but there can be only one Corsair focal point, and it should be the state who informs us who is a Corsair focal point. Um, ICAO is not the one who chooses between different users who will be the Corsair focal point and, and not. Um, for the training versions, we may have done so for this specific uh, pre-seminar purposes because there were multiple people who were participating in this pre-seminar, um, and you, we didn't sort of, you know, uh, only allow one uh, person from a state to participate in this pre-seminar, but for actual CCR purposes, uh, only one Corsair focal point uh, can be in the system. So going back to the status options, um, there are five status options uh, for a service request, um, just like the other um, other reporting areas, you know, you've seen that in progress, complete, ready, and locked. Um, there, for service requests, since it's a different type of request, uh, there are different sort of uh, status options. So for course, uh, which is new, closed, more information needed, ongoing, and withdrawn. Um, just like the new year record, when a new re a request is submitted, its status is automatically listed as new. Corsia focal point can change the status to withdrawn if they wish, um, should they wish to withdraw it from the list uh, because they've sort of either you know realized that the the there's no error you know etc. Then they can change the status to withdrawn you know. Um, but other data status is only for ICAO super user. I can ICAO super user is the only one who can change the status to uh, closed, more information needed, and ongoing. Um, more information needed is pretty straightforward, you know, when um, when we need more information to take any action or to, to support you. So we will change the status uh, to more information needed because by doing so, you will get a automated email message from CCR saying that, you know, I can, you know we need more information basically from you. Um, so that's uh, that status is valid. Uh, that is there for 
to address that, to, to set that, you know, automatic email messages, email notifications to the course focal point. Um, status closed by ICAO super user is pretty much straightforward. You know, when the, the issue is resolved, the status will be closed by ICAO and we will archive this for future for, uh, reference, um, like other, you know, um, other other things in CCR for data integrity and traceability. Um, every action is recorded, and we want to archive this closed service request for us to you know to to know further and and how we can you know uh, address you know, better uh, your your concerns and uh, requests. So I see that there are additional questions about. Um, to, to nominate state user. Two questions uh, on the same topic. So as Stelius mentioned in the previous slide, um, one way is you can send, an e uh, send us an email to ccr at icao.int. Um, we actually prefer that way. So um, ccr at icao.int. Um, so you are a focal point for state, you, uh, state blah, blah, blah. And I want to nominate these people. So that's one way. The other way is you can still use the service request. So service request and other, and say we want to nominate this person for a you know state user for this state. Um, and and we'll know from the the CCR system that that person uh, is of course a focal point already for which state. So we it's it's clear for us to to know as well. So there are two options. Um, or for a Coursera focal point to nominate one through email and the other through course, uh, service request and, and choose other option in, in here. Um, is there any other additional question about either service requests or CO2 emissions? Um, um, I see a question from George. Um, apologies. Uh, Will we be using the CCR as well in June this year to notify the selected option to calculate the offsetting obligation in the pilot phase? Um, I'm not really sure. Uh, Stelius, can, do you want to jump in? Um, yes. Um, thank you, Jiyoung. Uh, of course, again, this is not in relation to the CO2 emissions. This covers offsetting uh, requirements, so this is not um, the place to discuss this, but um, Georg, uh, very quickly on that, we are looking at, um, in, within the Secretariat, we are looking at uh, ways of uh, making sure states have uh, the potential to inform us on this. In the CCR, there is uh, such option, but uh, we are looking at uh, what is easiest for all states and we'll provide more information in uh, the very near future on that how information should come to the Secretariat in relation to this particular uh, option. But more on this, um, you know, outside this uh, training session and uh, it could be provided in a different way. Thank you. Thank you, Sirius. Um, uh, so if there is any additional question, please, uh, please, you know, feel free to use the chat function. I think for now, I think that I've covered what I wanted to deliver for today. Um, you know, as mentioned, it the question may be about uh, earlier segments as well, and Seyus and I or Tatsia can address your questions. I don't know if Jane has uh, joined us back here today so that she can close the today's uh, session. Um, okay. Yeah, um, before, sorry, sorry, before Jane, uh, um, before closing, I just wanted to let you know that today's, uh, today's webinar, uh, today's uh, pre-seminar is recorded and uh, will be available on the website um, after, and you will be notified with an email. And also as mentioned, the, 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 uh, the homework that I mentioned earlier, that will be shared to you as well uh, in the email. So um, you can sort of go back and, and if, you know, after trying on your own, if there's any issues, you can, obviously uh, return to us and ask uh, further questions if needed. Okay, so uh, here's Jane Hopi again. Um, as this is the last uh, IKO pre-seminar remote training on the uh, Corsa Central Registry, the CCR, I wanted to take this opportunity to provide you 
with a few closing remarks. So firstly, um, I hope this has been a productive webinar and that by now you as a course of focal point, you're familiarized with the CCR. As you have seen, it's, it's a practical, it's a simple tool and it's definitely not as scary as you imagined, right? Um, second, uh, I, I want to reassure you of the continued support of the Secretariat to the State Cost of Focal Point on all your efforts regarding course implementation, even remotely. You can count on us. The official CCR deployment is next month, May 2020, and please contact us if you have any need for further information. Third, uh, let me take this opportunity to publicly thank and congratulate the team that was involved in the preparation and delivery of all the CCR webinars. They have worked around the clock to make it possible and to ensure that you would be receiving this um, training on a timely manner. So let me in particular uh, recognize uh, Stelius, June, Amauri, Natalia, and Tetsuya. Those are the ones behind um, the success of this webinar and I really thank you very much. They not only worked in uh, this uh, period remotely, but they work remotely around the clock and beyond uh, normal working hours. Thank you guys, uh, very good results. I think everybody now appreciates uh, and we were able to train all the regions even um, in, in this um, exceptional times. And on that note, um, last but not least, I wanted to thank all of you for joining us today. As I said, those are uh, different, difficult, uh, exceptional times, and it is not easy to keep up with all our, um, our responsibilities. And therefore, I think uh, you, I want to congratulate all of you for being here today, for taking that step, and let's move on with the implementation of course. Yeah. And on that note, I would like to close the webinar and just um, ask you, please be safe, do your homework and continue to familiarize yourself with the CCR. We hope to see you all in the upcoming face-to-face -face regional seminars as soon as possible. Thank you. Bye-bye. Uh, just one, 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 one last comment, uh, if I may. Uh, there was a question about today's seminar, today's uh, webinar. It is recorded and we will try to make it available online to all of you so you can watch it um, another time if, if you saw it. All this information we provided to you uh, in the next few days. Thank you.